I think that just like in Rwanda, so many people did not speak up. That's why this sign says just speak up. Because I feel we have to speak up when we see genocide wherever it is occurring. And I believe it is happening in Sri Lanka. And that's why I think it's important for all Canadians to support the Tamils. Many of the Tamils that I'm meeting here today, they are not talking about uh, Tamil terrorists. They're talking about the civilians who are being killed. And they want a ceasefire. And I agree with that. I think there should be someone who is independent, who can go in and speak to the Sri Lankan government so that they stop this terrorism that they are creating for Tamil people. Even if there has to be a separation of that country so that the Tamils have a place of their own, I don't know. I don't know the solution, but I definitely think that the world should take, to, to take notice. Thank you. I made this sign. I made it very quickly, so it's not very fancy. It says, speak up, say no to genocide of Tamil civilians. I asked the Canadian government to stand for justice. Request a ceasefire. And if when you when you open up and you speak up, you say no. No to the genocide. We are Canadians standing for. And on the other side, I bring injustice to one human being is injustice to us all. And I really believe that. That's why I'm here. I think we need a permanent ceasefire in uh, Sri Lanka. And uh, genocide has to stop around the world. There shouldn't be any more genocide of any kind. That's, uh, that's, and, uh, and Harper needs to uh, do something about it and uh, make sure you. Well, He's declared you a terrorist group. He needs to change that because you're not a terrorist group. You know, it's, it's false, false reports from Sri Lanka government. You know, so. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about the collateral possible damage by, you know, putting up an economic embargo uh, on a grassroots level to the actual innocent population in Sri Lanka. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk more is 30 percent the highest inflation rate anywhere in Asia. Mm -hmm. Now, the government is bankrupt, fighting a war that they cannot win. And I don't believe for one moment mm -hmm. that we will lose the fight for Tamil Ilam. I may not be alive. I'm 77. But win we will. Mm -hmm. So they are prepared to spend all this money. Now they are running out of money. So what do they do? They go to the International Monetary Fund, who are now and go begging for it, despite the fact that Mr. Cabral, the governor of the central bank, said that their economy is in great shape just three months ago. And the guy doesn't know what he's, he's talking about. Why he's the governor of the central bank, I wouldn't know. Now, IMF are not known to give their money without getting a pound of flesh back. Mm -hmm. And that pound is going to be that the inflation rate be increased even further, the taxation burden be doubled. Mm -hmm. or the people, I don't know whether you or anybody else is aware that Sri Lanka has one of the highest suicide rates in the world. And it's not Tamils who are committing suicide, not only Tamils. Tamils in concentration camps are. They've been uh, killed. Yeah, they, I mean, they don't need to commit suicide. Before. They, they get they killed if they hang around long enough. Right. But the signal is, for people from my village in the south, they are in, drinking insecticide and committing suicide because they just don't know where their next meal is coming. Now, people are going to suffer. I don't deny that at all. But you know, we heard that same argument when we, uh, uh, that's the only advantage of being the age that I am. I've lived through all this. When we started that embargo on South African goods in the apartheid regime, we were told you'd be hurting the poor South African. I said, for sure. But then at the end of it, we are going to get a South Africa ruled by the majority people. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that there will be some suffering, but the short term suffering is not going to be nothing compared to the long term gains of getting this brutal fascist regime out and to say no more, no more of this repeat performance of genocide by any incoming government because we'll do the same thing to you. Mm -hmm. 
There's one other point that uh, what you missed, uh, or I missed rather, mm -hmm. uh, and that is the uh, not only the banning, we'll have to approach the trade unions mm -hmm. and tell them, as we did with uh, apartheid South Africa, don't touch anything, either going to Colombo or coming. Either passengers going by air to Colombo, maybe via Singapore, or tea coming into these countries, will not unload it, will not do anything. I mean, when, I, when we suggested all this with apartheid South Africa, somebody said, look, they are rolling in money. They got biggest diamond mines in the world. They are rolling in gold, quite literally rolling in gold. And you think they are going to come down and worry about some economic boycott. They did. And the economic boycott was so great that uh, South Africa had to uh, uh, s uh, settle to dismantle apartheid. Mm -hmm. We'll have to lobby the cricketers not to go and play in a, uh, a play cricket. It's a cricket mad country. And mm -hmm. say as a gesture, until the killing stops, we are not coming. Mm -hmm. We'll have to lobby the tourist trade and say, yes, beautiful beaches, but our blood-stained beaches stained with the blood of my Tamil people in the north and the east and my Sinhalese people in the south. Mm -hmm. So I think that we will have to lobby all of these. But the trade union is particularly important. In fact, when I return, I'm addressing the uh, Australian Socialist Alliance, which is a bunch of uh, uh, trade unions and others uh, of that uh, political uh, makeup, and saying, I'm uh, urging them, to please look at my DVDs and see the suffering of my people, uh, my children, the sensual bombing mm -hmm. affected me deeply because they were my children who were being bombed. Uh, and the people, the 350,000 people which I uh, just recorded in a DVD I released, which I will release to your station too, shows the, the, the enormity of the human suffering and say, look, this is what your governments are doing by not taking action, we can't alter government mm -hmm. action. What we can do is to what we can do at grassroots level, mm -hmm. down on the ground, mm -hmm. by not buying uh, Sri Lankan goods and using, say, Indian goods uh, or alternatives. Uh, and you can help us in stopping genocide by s refusing to service uh, ships and tourists uh, going in and out of Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. uh, if we can only get that done and we can do the impossible, and that is to persuade the plantation Tamils to down their tools. You see, the plantation Tamils were very badly treated by the Sri Lankan Tamils at a time when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe that one ethnic group would treat members of the same ethnic group. I mean, Tamils are Tamils. Mm -hmm. they the Jaffna Tamils looked down on the Batikolo Tamils. The Batikolo Below the Batikolo Tamils, way below that, came the coolies. Mm -hmm. They are the South Indian laborers brought in who put Sri Lanka on the map. Now the wheel has turned full circle because if we can get the coolies on the tier state to down their tools, that will be the end of Sri Lanka's economy because 75% of the income today is from tea. tea. Everything else has dried up. The people working in the Middle East are coming back in droves. There's unemployment, not only unemployment, but loss of revenue. Mm -hmm. The tea trade is falling, rubber is falling, cinnamon is falling, tourism is virtually down to zero. So where the money coming from? Foreign exchange. Exactly. So uh, colonialism today takes the form of foreign grants. And that's what we, if we can stop it, fine. If we can't, then we'll take the Sri Lankan government to a halt by Firstly, create economic boycotts and, if possible, supporting the Sinhalese and others, particularly from the left parties, the NLSSP, uh, who are the only people mm -hmm. like Vikramabahu, uh, Konradatna, and uh, Siritunga Jasurya, to sit down and say, I'm sorry, we are not moving. We are bringing 50,000 people to Colombo and we are going to block the streets until you stop this war. And they are quite capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they will fire at them. I mean, uh, uh, a bunch that were capable of killing several uh, uh, 20,000 singular youths during the 71 and 89 uh, uprising uh, and are now capable of killing what uh, the current figure is 70 Tamils a day mm -hmm. uh, and 700 children killed in the last two months are quite capable of turning the guns on the Sinhalese people. Uh, they might. 
But with today's television coverage, I don't think they dare And to. the attention of the international media Absolutely. on Sri Lanka right now. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. While we're on the, on, the, on the topic of grassroots uprising and whatever, we'll take a few more calls. I'm sure we have a lot of questions on the same. Um, let's speak.